We're going. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we see the recording, so go for it, Stu. All right. All right. So, so is everybody here familiar with Mirador? Is anybody not familiar with Mirador? I'll look yeah. at that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, um, so uh, Mirador has been a thing for, I'd say, over five or six years. Um, it started as a, um, it was intended to be a kind of a single screen, uh, sophisticated scholarly workbench for comparison of images, initially medieval manuscript type content for comparison, annotation, and analysis. And um, I think we were kind of successful in creating that, but what we all of a sudden started seeing were institutions um, adopting it for lots of other purposes. Um, some were adopting it for really creative digital humanities projects. Others um, adopted it as the primary viewer for their catalog. Um, so all of a sudden Mirador had this range of applications that we actually didn't originally architect, design, or plan for it. Um, there were some cases in which we saw people starting to hack Mirador in really, really awesome and creative ways and add buttons in really strange places and kind of created some Franken software out of it. And in other cases, people were trying to kind of really pare it down to be much simpler. Um, and in both cases, developers were responding to us that it was actually quite difficult to do that. So the developer experience was not, um, was not spectacular. Um, for doing that. And the kind of visual design user experience started to get clumsier and clumsier as the product evolved over time. Still uh, was, was pretty popular, widely adopted across the world, um, and lots of enthusiasm from libraries and museums and archives and folks in the cultural heritage community for this type of tool. So uh, we've arrived at this moment where we were ready to and were able to kind of assemble the resources in a team to kind of build the next version of Mirador. And what we decided to do was redesign and rebuild it from scratch, from zero. So um, not from scratch in that we took five, six, seven years of experience um, and feedback with Mirador to inform our, our current work. But in terms of the kind of technical componentry, the architecture, the user experience design, the visual design, we kind of started from, from, from scratch. Um, fast forward to the week of January 7th, I believe. Um, a number of institutions over the years have committed resources to, to, to Mirador, and, and we found a handful of institutions were so kind of committed to this next version that they dedicated um, uh, resources in the form of people. So we actually were able to assemble a team of 18 uh, developers, user experience designers, to kind of work together in concert over the next 10 weeks to kick off the development of Mirador 3. Um, I can show you a few artifacts. So, uh, you know, what we've tried to do is um, we have a kind of an agile software development process here at Stanford that we've been using on our teams for a while. We've never done it with such a large team nor such a distributed team. We've worked on open source projects before, big community open source projects before, but never kind of a concentrated software engineering uh, uh, process with 18 participants from um, five, four or five different time zones, um, from, from, from California to, to Germany in this case. Um, so I can show you a couple of the project artifacts. Um, we've been working for about three and a half weeks uh, I'm going to share my screen now. Just go for the whole desktop. Hopefully you can see. So the first thing that I'll show you, and how long y'all want me to go for? Give me a give me a, a a stop time, so I can. Kathy, Michael, how, how much time? Do uh, I have? Yeah, Stu, we were looking at uh, for about 15 minutes or so. Okay, so. 11.25 at this point? That, that would be great. Okay, all right. So, um, so we kicked off the project, and one of the artifacts that we use when we kick off a, a software development project 
at Stanford is an inception deck. And it's a tool that's used in, in, in some circles of Agile to try to get the whole team on the same page as to kind of the purpose um, and structure of the project. So I'm gonna try to really quickly run through the inception deck to give you a sense of, of how we're proceeding. So the first thing we do is we try to just kind of get some mind share on, on what we're doing and why we're here. Um, we want to create a, an amazing next version of Mirador. You see in the circle though, um, our real focus here was maintainability, sustainability, extens extensible and community supported. Um, so we really want this to be a, a tool that is easy to adopt um, and, and easy to contribute to um, uh, for the long term. So then there's an elevator pitch, which is really long and no one would ever say on an elevator. It gives you a little bit more um, depth and texture to what we're trying to accomplish uh, with Mirador. We try to document um, the stakeholder communities and there's so many. This slide doesn't really do, um, uh, do the stakeholder community for Mirador justice. Um, we've got the existing um, institutions that either adopt or contribute to Mirador, the project team, but most importantly, the researchers, instructors um, who work with cultural heritage images um, that we're trying to support. Um, so this is the project team. And we at Stanford have dedicated a full team of seven, well, I guess eight if you include me, people to this work over the next nine or 10 weeks. Um, and they include roles like product owner and user experience designer, um, software developers. Then we have developer, uh, developer from Princeton, um, two from the Bavarian State Library and six from the University of Leipzig who are embarking on a major state funded effort to build a medieval manuscripts portal. And um, Mirador is such a central component to their work that they've decided to uh, contribute um, a large number of folks to, to, to building out Mirador 3. And then we have a representative from the IIIF editorial group, Mike Appleby, who's kind of helping us make sure that we're doing the right things with respect to IIIF. So then we do things like talk about what's in scope and out of scope for this particular kind of round of work. So Mirador is going to be a long lived uh, open source project. Hopefully it will be more of a distributed um, software development model. But for this kind of concentrated 10 week project, we talk about kind of what's in scope and what's out of scope. Um, and I'm not going to go through every line item here, but the, the basic summary is um, you know, basic re-architecture, redesign, basic, the basics of image viewing functionality, and then things like an API, uh, plugin system, so people can build their own plugins, documentation for contributing developers. Um, really what we're trying to accomplish is get some of the basics of Mirador set up and then set up a project for future contribution and stability. So we're not doing all the things. It's really about setting the project up for future contribution. Um, there are a couple other things with respect to, um, uh, in the earliest stages, uh, responsive uh, design so that it responds to different device types and screen sizes. Um, we really wanna be accessible, accessibility first and international first. Um, so responsive accessibility and internationalization from the beginning, um, uh, are gonna be really important for, for, for setting the project up for success. Uh, then we talk about the kinds of things that keep us up at night, that worry about us, the risks of the project, really kind of an open and honest um, uh, process where the team can kind of talk honestly with each other. Uh, the kind of the biggest thing that people were concerned about, of course, is this kind of gigantic and distributed team, um, many of whom are kind of new to the technology that we've chosen uh, uh, to, to develop, to develop the, the, the tool. Um, let's see, project timeline is really unknown. We're, we're going to start this first phase and we're going to end it at, um, Stanford's library developers conference, which is called LDCX, but we're actually likely to keep the team together for a few weeks after that. And then we're going to kind of take stock and see, um, whether or not we're well situated for a more distributed model or whether or not we need more kind of concentrated full team attention. And then we need to figure out how we're going to um, organize that. I think as the spotlight community has experienced, how do you kind of, you know, get teams from different institutions to kind of 
uh, align their their work um, and synchronize their work to to make make good progress. So we'll we'll face that challenge after this first wave of work as well. Um, the last thing that we do is we talk about trade offs on the project to kind of help inform our future discussions about um, what we should work on. Um, and we use these funny sliders that are a bit complicated to kind of grok until you spend a little time with them. But essentially what the, the trade-off sliders for this project suggest is that um, we are prioritizing uh, user experience and developer experience over feature completeness. So for those of you who are interested in a full featured um, Mirador, that's not our objective for the first wave of work. Our, our objective for the first wave of work is to really kind of figure out um, the, the, the optimal user experience and developer experience and get some of the basics set up so that um, others are well positioned to add those features in the future. Um, I think this is probably something that, um, these are probably some lessons that we've learned at Stanford and in the Spotlight community um, that, um, you know, uh, had we had the benefit of hindsight, we, we, we might have done a better job of helping set up Spotlight for the same kinds of um, extensibility and uh, developer experience, but we're learning. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stop there. I feel like, it looks like I I feel like I have about five minutes left. Sure. Um, so I'm trying to. There we go. Oop. Uh, okay. Let's see. So I want to point you to a couple of other artifacts. Uh, beyond the, the, the project inception deck. Um, so all the work is happening in, um, so that there are a couple of different places you can go to follow the project. For those of you who are more technically oriented and comfortable with uh, GitHub, GitHub is kind of the best starting point to, um, to look at the project. If you really want to kind of dig into the issues and what we're working on. Um, there's a Mirador 3 tag in the issues. Um, the wiki is a place where documentation is emerging. So you see this section called Mirador 3 resources that again is, is pretty focused on the adopter um, and implementer um, community. Um, guidelines for contributors to the software project, et cetera. Uh, at a higher level, there is a um, there is a, a public Project Mirador folder in Google Drive that um, has some of these other project artifacts. For example, the uh, that Inception deck that I just showed you, the documentation from the kickoff week, and then some of the design artifacts. And this may be what people are um, folks are pretty interested in. Um, there are uh, a pretty extensive set of um, of uh, interactive mockups and designs that are ever evolving that are guiding the work and that's not the document that I'm looking for let's see here kind of noodling around here um, ah, here we go in the Mirador design repository actually from github um, there are links to um, the uh, original design artifacts, um, and I think the design background diagrams document is probably the best one. Um, and then you have a link to the interactive mockups, which is essentially what is informing the development um, uh, of the software. And it's an ever growing list. Um, Gary Geisler, who I think participates in this call, um, and was prominent in uh, Spotlight Design, partnered with Jennifer Vine uh, to do a lot of the kind of discovery, user experience discovery, and to build these interactive designs. And they're on the project full time for the next several weeks. Um, so those mockups are, 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 are helpful. Um, and for those of you who are interested in following a little less closely, um, you just want to make sure that you are subscribed to the IIIF Discuss email list. And I can put a link to the list you should, you should subscribe to because uh, we are we're working in two-week sprints. And at the end of every sprint, 
we record a video demo um, and we publish it on YouTube. So the demos themselves are actually open. We publish a Zoom that you can join. The demos are typically around 15 minutes um, or less where we show the, uh, the outcomes of the sprint and then we publish them to our YouTube channel and then we'll send a summary email to a bunch of distribution lists to keep people up to date. So this is actually a pattern that started with the initial development of Spotlight um, and we're, we've evolved that process and continue it um, and continuing it with Mirador. So um, I see it's 24 past the hour, so I'm gonna stop there. Um, and if there are questions, I see the, uh, the chat is, is going. Um, but I'm, I'm happy to answer uh, any questions that people have in the short time we have left. Perfect. Stu, thank you. Thank you. And, and as, as you pointed out, uh, and I'll just share that the, uh, you do post the messages for your calls. You do invite participation. So for folks on the call who are interested in hearing and seeing what's going on, uh, by all means, join in on the, on the calls. They're posted on the list each time. Uh, do we have any questions for Stu? There's a request for a few links in the chat. Yeah, for sure. I'll, I'll, I'll populate the notes document with as many of those links as I, I can, Lynette, for sure. Perfect. Yeah. The other thing I should mention is that we actually do deploy uh, multiple times a day. <laughs> um, every pull request uh, gets its own version of Mirador that's actually open for, for people to check out. And then there's actually a, um, a kind of the master branch is always deployed. Um, the team really doesn't want that to be a very public uh, link, although it's not protected in any way, just because we're so early and we don't want to give people the impression that Mirador is done or this is what it's going to look like. Um, but uh, as, as we get through the next couple of sprints, we're, we're more, more likely to um, put up a public, like a much more public and, and published demo that people can follow over the course of the project to see progress. Um, I, can, I can put the demo in the chat right now and you can kind of tinker with it, but just please don't file any uh, tickets based on this particular demo because um, it's really early days. Perfect, perfect. Uh, thank you, Stu. Uh, certainly we can pick up more questions via email as we go. Uh, I don't want to shortchange anybody else on the demos. We will be posting the links in the chat channel and we'll also get them into the minutes. Uh, of our Google Doc as well so that we can share that with everybody. Um, so thank you, Stu. And if you don't mind, what I'd like to do is, is stop this recording. And then, uh, Vanessa, I'm going to go ahead and let you make your presentation so we can make sure that we get it in there. So, uh, Stu, what I'd like to do is stop.